Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is fight day, May the 4th, 2019. Let's talk about yesterday's weigh-in in the Canelo Jacobs matchup. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's ask a basic question. Is anyone really a middleweight today? I thought both guys, Canelo and Jacobs, looked like they needed a meal at yesterday's weigh-in, right? Both guys were way too thin. You could tell both guys had to drop several pounds to show up in the condition that they did at yesterday's weigh-in. Just look at the chin and neck areas on both guys. I'll be surprised, and I was tracking their weights. I know Canelo was in the 160s for a while. But I'll be surprised if either guy shows up weighing less than 170 pounds for the fight. Right? Both guys are going to gain a lot of weight. So from my perspective, and I'm biased, right? I'm hoping for a stoppage. That would maximize my profits. From my perspective, neither guy is in great shape. I know they looked in great shape. But when you're yo-yoing weight, in my opinion, you just don't have the stamina. I know this happens in almost every fight. I understand. That cutting weight is part of boxing folklore, right? I'm just telling you that I've been watching the sport long enough to notice that the Manny Pacquiao's and the Floyd Mayweather's, the guys who are actually at the weight that the fight's happening, right? The guys who, you know, don't have to train that hard to make weight, the guys who show up at weigh-ins. Bernard Hopkins, when he was a middleweight, sometimes one, two, three pounds below the weight limit. Those are the guys who are in shape who have the stamina. The guys who have to cut weight, cut 10 pounds, etc. Those are the guys who aren't in the best of shape. Right? I'm just telling you that it's remarkable that Danny Jacobs is able to make 160. This is a guy who's over six feet tall, right? You saw how he does it at yesterday's weigh-in. He was so thin here. Didn't look like himself in the neck area. Same thing applies to Canelo. I remember when Canelo used to have body fat. Now Canelo has no body fat. Now you're seeing every ab Canelo has, right? So forgive me. To me, what I saw at yesterday's weigh-in increases the odds of a stoppage. I think these guys are going to gain weight. Canelo yesterday hops off the scale, reached for that water a bit too fast, didn't he? Didn't that tell you that he was dehydrated to make the weight? They even joked about it in the interview. They were like, hey, you know, what food are you going to eat now? And Canelo was saying, hey, pasta, fish. Then, of course, they asked him, hey, I thought you preferred meat as opposed to fish, right? Question's a little bit loaded because there's some tainted meat. There's a tainted meat suspension in Canelo's past. And Canelo handled it. Canelo said, yeah, I do prefer me. In other words, what was on his mind yesterday besides Danny Jacobs? His next meal. Let's also talk about the behavior of the two guys. Understand, I saw the 40 Days or whatever the name of the show was. Um, I saw portions of that series where you see Danny Jacobs and Canelo being friendly and deferential to each other. Um, you know, you see them traveling to Mexico. They're real respectful, right? Both guys think they're going to win. Both guys think they're the best. Both guys think they're the best the other guy has ever faced. 
but both guys also were complimentary of each other. Both guys realized that the other guy has accomplished a lot in the ring. But yet, at yesterday's weigh-in, and it was out of character, it was a bit surprising, Canelo felt the need to put his forehead on Jacobs' forehead. Jacobs looked like he was surprised by it, but was going along with it. Then Canelo tried to move his head into Jacobs' head. Right? Folks, you got to cut this kind of stuff out for future fights, because one of these days, somebody is going to get a wound up here that's going to nullify the fight. Well, then it got really interesting. A bunch of people hopped between the two of them. Okay, okay. Now, I've seen guys showboat at weigh-ins before, right? I've seen Ali, I've seen Ray Leonard, and these guys are at weigh-ins, and it's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek type thing. This didn't look tongue-in-cheek to me. Understand, Danny Jacobs has his son on stage, right? Guys are a little bit different when they're in front of their kids, aren't they? When the guys separate the two guys, Canelo looks like he wants to push guys away to get at Jacobs on the stage. Right? This seemed above and beyond marketing. Now, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that Canelo is hoping a boxing match doesn't break out during the fight. I think Canelo's looking at Danny Jacobs' size. He knows Jacobs is a smooth customer in the ring. He wants Jacobs upset because he wants Jacobs in the pocket. He doesn't want to have to go find Jacobs. He wants Jacobs to try to find him. He wants to meet in the middle of the ring. He wants to land punches. Right? Now, we'll see what happened. I can tell you this with certainty. Jacobs was rattled on the stage. You'd have to be Robert De Niro to pull off as good an acting job as he did if it was an acting job. Right? The interviewer goes over to Jacobs after the dust up, and Jacobs had to see Canelo, you know, looking like he wanted to come after him, after people grabbed him. Right, Jacobs uses a curse word. He calls Canelo an M effer. Right? My word, his word's a little bit bigger, right? Just fill in the letters. Right? He calls Canelo an M effer. This is with his son right next to him. And you get the feeling that Jacobs is the kind of guy who normally is a great dad. Right? You see, Jacobs. You know, in the 40 days thing, you see Jacobs with his friends, you see Jacobs in his neighborhood. You get the feeling that Jacobs is just a great guy in general. This is a cancer survivor. Inspirational figure. You see the way his son is by his side, and you know Jacobs is tight with his kids. He's not one of these guys who barely knows his own children. So for him to call the other fighter, an M effort with his kid right here tells me that he was very upset. It's even worse than that. As he walks off the stage, a reporter comes over to him with a mic. Now understand, to get on stage at a weigh-in for a fight of this magnitude, you need real credentials. So this is a reporter from some heavy-duty media outlet. And Jacobs waves off the reporter. He's too upset after his initial interview, where he curses with his kid there. He's too upset to talk to the reporter. So I believe there's a sense of betrayal in this fight. Right? These are guys who were complimentary of each other, who were basically saying, look, I want the best legacy I can have. To get that, I need to fight the best, and that means fighting this man in front of me. Well, now it's more of a, hey, you tried to punk me in front of my kid at the weigh-in with some bully move. So, 
to sum up, I don't think either guy, and I know they look magnificent. I don't think either guy is a legitimate middleweight. To me, they both look weight drained. Right? Canelo is a guy who takes parts of rounds off. As it is. I think both guys are going to be much heavier on fight night. I'm curious today to see if Jacobs meets the rehydration clause that limits the amount of weight he can gain after the weigh-in, before the rehydration uh, weigh-in. Right? Both of these guys are going to be gaining a lot of pounds after this weigh-in. That's the first thing. The second thing is I can tell Canelo, in my opinion, wants a stoppage. He's trying to anger his opponent to get his opponent into a shootout, right? Jacobs is going to have to keep a cool head. In my opinion, if he does, he could easily live behind a jab and beat Canelo. So we'll see what happens. I encourage you to look at the way in The zone has done an excellent job. Yes, I'm pubbing the zone. They're not paying me or anything like that, but I want to see the success of the sport. I want to see the success of the platform. I like the idea of having a platform that gives you a way around paying expensive pay-per-view fees. The Zone's done an excellent job actually having the way in as something you can watch on demand. I would encourage everyone to give it a look. The way I'm playing this fight is I think the big underdog, and by the way, a lot of money's flowing on Canelo now. I think the big underdog, Danny Jacobs, is the better fighter. Let me just be clear on that. I like Jacobs to win hedged with the under 10 and a half rounds. This way, if either guy gets a stoppage inside of the midway point of the 11th round, you win. If Danny Jacobs wins a decision or gets a stoppage after the midway point of the 11th round, if he gets a stoppage at any time, you win. But understand the risk involved. This is Canelo in Las Vegas. If Canelo gets a very late stoppage, right, after the midway point of the 11th, or if Canelo wins on the scorecards, you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let's hope it's a great fight. Thanks for stopping by.